Hello and welcome back to Power Wash Simulator. When we last left off, we were still working on the roof. Uh, let's do that. I don't know why I did that. Um, so, uh, we still have a bit of a ways to go. I want to uh, make sure that I'm getting that all in one pass. But, we have made a pretty decent dent in um, the firehouse itself. We still have Quite a ways to go, though. I mean, we've only hit like 33%. But that's because the tower is massive. And that is what we're doing next. But of course, I want to finish this first. Which, you know. Stands to reason. There we go. But yeah, that thing's massive. It's a good chunk of, um, of the, uh, overall, uh, the overall, uh, area to clean. So, of course we're missing a bunch. And I do apologize if there's any weird thumping and bumping around, because it turns out Yep. Um, the neighbors are being in touch on the loud side. Uh, I think I've mentioned in the past that my neighbors have kids, um, which is fine, but it's also really early for them to be making this kind of noise. Um, like. This is... I know kids have a tendency to, to wake up early sometimes, and, like, I don't begrudge them for it, but it's fairly early. Um... I don't know if that gets picked up on the mic. Uh, I don't think it does, but I also don't want to assume it doesn't. Uh, uh -oh. Oop, there we go. I think getting that in that that corner is a pain. We want to get under here as well. I, uh, also... Then, um... looking at some of the games that are coming to, um, the, the Game Pass, which, like, there's a pretty good amount of games, there's always a pretty decent amount, um, and I'm trying to figure out what of the, the, uh, the games coming would be. Decent for the channel. 
I know I keep saying, oh, well, I'm, you know, there's a bunch of games that I can play. There are. There's so many games. And I'm not even caught up on a lot of stuff. Um. I know there's, uh, some other sim games I want to try out to see how I feel about them. Um, like, there's Bee Simulator. I, I thought that looked fun. We'll see, but, you know, I thought it looked interesting. Um, uh, this. Looked like something that might be up my alley. Uh, though I will admit I did not love, as less from this statement this is going to be, I did not love Goat Simulator. Um, and actually I think that was more down to the, the controls than anything else. The controls are a little rough. Uh, so, I, um... Will likely never play that. Besides, there's no real, um... It feels like it's one of those pick-up-put-down type deals. This is... It doesn't have a story or anything, but, like... It's kind of something you can pick up and play for a while. And there is linear progression? As opposed to Goat Simulator, which doesn't seem to have it. Though, so I've not played 3. Um, I am loath to spend money on a game that I, I end up hating. Which also still feels really bad, because I always feel really bad about not liking games. Um, it's always a really big bummer. Not liking a game. Because, you, you know, it's not like... You're going, oh yeah, this is going to be the best game out. Oh, sometimes you're, you're saying that, but... A lot of times it's... You go into it with expectations and it doesn't meet them and it's bums you out a bit. So, you know. Oh. Yeah, stop just a second. Okay. That is, of course, the job of no. There we go. Um, I'm gonna switch to the metal cleaner. Wait. Uh, how about there was cleaner in there? Come back around here. Like, unless you're just like a mochinous person, I can't think of anybody that ever relishes disliking a game. You know, so it's always kind of a bummer. Unfortunately, given the current circumstances, I don't exactly have the financial wherewithal to 
my games and end up not liking them. So I've been... All of the games that I've come into the possession of currently are um, free. Um, as a lot of people know, Epic does a weekly free game, and then they have their, like, their holiday, their winter sale. And that's great. That's how I, I tend to get a lot of my games, because... Uh... Free is, free is affordable. Um... And, uh, we like free. We like free around here. But I don't know why I did that. I don't know. Good grief. Uh, where's the one? Okay. And we'll start cleaning that as well. We, I think, should be hitting 40%, so... Which, good, but... That'd be better. Um, I have seen... A little bit of Baldur's Gate. If you're on like TikTok and you're on the right parts of TikTok, that's kind of all you see. And I don't mind it, but given that Baldur's Gate is like heavily tied to D and D, it's and I being someone who enjoys D and D. Maybe? I don't know. It, it's early. How does grammar? Um. But me being someone who enjoys Andy, it's great, but. It's kind of like, uh, when Tears of the Kingdom came out, and, uh, my For You page kind of being massively saturated with Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom content, which, what oh, is this water jet, is this the water jet, people? I'm having a frightful time with the ordinary, any chance you could give it a quick is I can't help but notice that your ad says power wash. You do realize that involves hot water. You should change the wording of your ad to pressure wash. Unless you I don't I didn't catch what all that said. I don't know man, that, that feels really pedantic. Uh Okay. I think we're going to go with the 25, because I believe the 25 works for this. Yeah. Actually, let's see if 40 doesn't work nearly as well. So yeah, let's go back to the 25. Which still, like, decent, but could be better. Um... Oh, I've been getting a lot of Baldur's Gate stuff, and I can't really afford Baldur's Gate right now, and literally the only reason, given that I'd been laid off by the before uh, Tears of the Kingdom officially came out, 
Uh, about a month before, actually. Um, the reason I could afford that is because I had already pre-ordered it. Um, I'm not typically one to pre-order stuff. Uh, mostly because I just never have the money to. But, uh, yeah, I was excited enough to, to justify pre-ordering it. And that was also before the the price hike was uh, not announced, but it was before the, the official price it had been announced. So I ended up paying another, like, nearly 20 bucks for it, and that was with the, the tax, but... Like, I'd had a gift card that I was holding on to for a while, and I was gonna do something else with it, but I'm actually kinda glad that I, I did buy Tears of the Kingdom with it. Um, honestly, I can't think of much else that I would have done with it. Aside from, you know, order, buy a game. Let's move. That way, we're it, it's out of the way. Um. But yeah, I I pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom. Uh. And. I didn't, I didn't do Baldur's Gate, so I, you know, I haven't had the chance to play with it. It looks like it's fun though, uh, but again, I'm also worried about spending that kind of money and it not being my cup of tea, which is kind of why. I really wish that rentals were a thing still. That's why I still pay for, um, Game Pass, actually. Uh, because it's a really good way to see if I'm going to like a game. It, it's actually knocked a few games off of my lists. Like, oh, hey, I played this. I didn't actually enjoy it much, so I'm just gonna take that off the list now. So, I guess this is a long way of saying uh, bring back Blockbuster? If you're old enough to have gone to Blockbuster, I do recommend you take your aspirin and or your your blood pressure medic and your blood pressure medicine, because, uh, how's your back feeling? You, you in pain yet? You wake up this morning, you ache? Me too. Well, I didn't wake up aching, but I, yeah. Because some of us were born in years that started with 19. Yeah, that's not terribly old because the 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 uh, the oldest would be twenty four now, I think, which isn't that old. I I don't want to you know sit here and pretend like twenty four is ancient, but given the internet, you know. Twenty four is not ancient, it's just internet old apparently. So yeah. Oh, I think Blockbuster was kinda dying by that point, so I think I was I don't know, I mean, like school when you started seeing 
This is like Blockbuster shutting down. I know there was a Blockbuster and like Hollywood video and family video. And before anybody suggests, just as just as an aside, um Gamefly. I don't know if Gamefly is a viable option, and I don't want something that I have to pay a monthly fee for. I just want I want to borrow a game, I want to play the game, cool, good, great. So in retrospect, I don't have a disc player for my computer, so uh, that might be a little difficult. I don't know how well that would work. I know this takes a while, but it's a decent way of getting it all, and evenly, I might add. Okay, I think that's better. No, no, that's just as bad, if not worse. Okay. Actually, thinking about it, probably should have just li lined up with one of the lines to begin with. Um, and also, to think about it, I should probably have bought a disc player, um, if for no other reason than, you know, like, I don't listen to CDs really anymore, but being able to, to like, pull an old disc and listen to it, even in the, this day and age, would be nice, actually, especially in this day and age, because there's nothing quite like going to listen to a song and you don't own it and it's on a digital platform so you don't actually you know like have access to it if they decide to take it down um there are a bunch of songs that i would love to be able to listen to right now that you just can't get um, there's, if you're into funk, you probably know the group Funkadelic, you probably also know the group Parl the Parliament. Um, there is a song that they have called Not Just Knee Deep, and you cannot find that song in its proper version anywhere, and I have looked. Um, it's actually really frustrating, because it's such a, it's a good song, and it's actually a song that I grew up listening to. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, it's not on Apple, it's not on Spotify, I don't think it's on Deezer, which like, a lot of the stuff on Spotify is on Deezer, a lot of the... I know there's a number of things that are Apple exclusives, but that's, like, album versions more than anything. But yeah, no, like... And... That's kind of... Kind of speaks to the permanence of media. And why so many advocates are talking about 
hey, you know, you should be owning your physical media. You should be owning your media. You should be buying it physically whenever you can. And it isn't just, oh, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to scare you. It, people have been saying this for decades now. Uh, the DRM conversation has been happen happening for a while now. Ever since DRM became a thing. Um, and I'm actually old enough to remember, I don't know if they still do it, but I remember when uh, Microsoft, when using um, their, I don't think it's called that now, but when you would use Windows Media Player, if you imported a file to it, uh, to it, it would import it as a WMA, and unless you got a specialty player, Windows Media was the only was the only program that you could op you could open that file in, and it was the only program you could play that file in, and it was really obnoxious because I had purchased an album and I'd you know like imported it to my computer. This was I think before iTunes was as you ubiquitous as it is today, um, because it used to be, um, iTunes was not a thing for, uh, Windows. You really, like, yeah, you could use it if you wanted to, but what, you, what were you going to do with it? And I actually remember, um, Years and years and years ago, and I mention this occasionally, uh, that the only way you could get an iTunes account was like you had to like buy an iTunes card and you had to like put it on your account, and that was the only way you could do that. Incidentally enough, though, I got mine through a Pepsi promotion. Um. And every year, every summer, they would do this, like, this promotion called, like, Pepsi Summer of Music or something like that. They did it when I was in high school, and that's how I got my account. Like, um, and I actually remember being the only person in the house with an account for a while. Which was an experience. Um, but yeah, no, like when the DRM argument started happening, people were like, no, no, you're just, you like, you're blowing things out of proportion. And now it's like, mm, no, not really. There's also the argument of, like, owning your own media because companies are, are doing, engaging in nonsense and, you know, like, making it effectively impossible for you to own your own media. And I think that might be part of the reason why you're starting to see a resurgence, not just of vinyl, um, but of CDs, you're... starting to see people owning their physical media now, and that's great. But I, I still want to, you know, like, not have to go to YouTube to listen to, to certain songs because you can't find them on, on digital platforms anymore because of this reason or that reason. And I, like, I, I'm not saying, oh, well, you know, if an artist decides to pull their music from a digital platform, 
for whatever reason, or a platform. Well, no, I, I guess it's also kind of a pain if an artist pulls their their work from a platform. And, like, I respect that choice. I know Prince did it. Um, he basically was not letting anybody post his music. You could find a song or two here or there, but for the most part, it was just, if you wanted to listen to Prince, good luck. And it wasn't really until after he died that you started being able to get his music anywhere. Um... But I also recognize that part of the reason he basically said no to having his music hosted was, you know, platforms like Spotify pay literal pennies on the dollar. There are artists who have hit the, the billion stream club, and that's, it's, it should be even then a decent amount of money, but it's not. And even... Um, platforms that repute to pay artists more money don't pay a ton. But, you know, the, the politics of artists and the money that they make off of their art is uh, a whole, a whole subject. Um... Because artists really don't make money off of their work. Um, in fact, if I'm remembering correctly, on average, an artist only sees about 15% of their album sales. So for every dollar that you spend on an album, an artist is seeing 15 cents. Um, which I think with a $20 album works out to be like six bucks. Is it six? I, it might be less than that, but yeah, no, like I completely get it. It is irritating, but I completely get it. Um, still want to be able to listen to those songs though. And I know, oh, well, you could just buy the album. That's an option if you can find it. And that's an option if... If, you know, the album hasn't been out of print for so long that no one has it anymore. Um, there's actually a group that, speaking of prints, that he... He managed, I want to say, uh, called the family, and they've basically reformed. But uh, you can't really find their album anywhere. You can find videos of the the songs on YouTube, sure, but for the most part, you can't really find it, and. You know, you know this. If you know the song that Sinead O'Connor sang, uh, "Nothing Compares to You," that was actually originally done. That was written for the family. That was her. Her version was a cover. Um, and even the versions that you can find online that are her, it's like it's Prince with Rosie Gaines. And there's nothing wrong with that version, but, you know, if you grew up with a particular version of a song, you kind of get used to that version of the song. So, when you can't find it, it's kind of irritating. Okay. So I think we've gotten to the point where we kind of just... And do sweeping like that. 
That's that works. I'm thinking though, I don't think we're going to finish today. I don't think we're gonna finish this today. And there goes my chair, Papa. I do have to get a new office chair. Um while we're at it, let's wash this. I think after th if there are a couple jobs that have popped up after this or after this uh, I'll have to see what those are maybe when I'm done recording I'll uh, sit down and, and look at what those are Um, I think I have access to, uh, Detroit becoming human to get back to the, the conversation of games. Uh, we should actually switch back to the 15th. Um, I think, I, I'm not going to sit here and say definitively that I do, because I don't remember. I'm going to have to, I think it's, I think I may have access to it, but uh, I may have to sit down and play that for a little while if, if we, if I do. Really on the merit of, you know, not wanting to go, oh yeah, I'm totally playing this, and then start playing it and hate it. Um, awesome. Uh, I do know, though, that I won't be playing the Bioshock game. And I'm not going to play the Bioshock games, partially because they're not really up my alley. I've, I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it does not interest me in the slightest. Um, there's also the issue with Bioshock Infinite. And before anybody says anything, I'm entitled to my opinion. But I have, I remember when the game first came out, and um, I was watching someone, I think, either stream it or let's play it. Uh, and if you've never played Bioshock Infinite, or you've never seen footage of it, it's like this weird alternate universe situation going on, and it takes place, I want to say, I want to say Infinite takes place sometime in the early 20th century. I don't know if it's like the 20s, but it's definitely the early 20th century. Um, Doc, it's Leonard Cal's dad. When can you come around? I've got something filthy dirty for you. Uh, okay. Um...
but uh, like the the subject of historical al alternate alternate universe racism is is a thing, and um, I'm tired. Like I have to deal with racism in the real world. I I don't need it also in in video games. I probably would never play something like Mafia 3. Um, not my cup of tea. You know, it's why I don't tend to want to play games that tackle some really hard real world stuff. Um, I already deal with a lot of that stuff in the real world. I don't want to... And video games are a means of escape. I don't also want to deal with it in my escapism. And if you want to, that's fine. Um, I, I will not begrudge you. I will not begrudge you. Um, But there's also the issue of how they decide to handle a particular thing in game, and I don't love it. Um, it's very You know that argument you seem to be, that you get from a lot of people that make, like to make that, that equivalence of uh, both sides are equally bad and it's like, I think that, you know, this position is bad because legitimate actual actual things and then there's the position of well i think that people like that should something terrible and it's like that's not even the same that's that's terrible why would why, why would you say that? And then you have that person who goes, uh, they're make, they're both making equally terrible arguments. It's like, I, no, no, that's not what's going on here. And the fact that you're saying that that's what's going on here, this makes me scratch my head. Um, they decided to take that to an extreme conclusion in the game and I just like oh no thank you and I, I remember bringing this up I think to somebody that I was following at the time and they're like or maybe I was bringing it up to somebody in a chat of someone who I was following at the time. And they were like, well, you haven't played the game yet, so you can't really say I, I'm, I, I am a marginalized person in the United States. Uh, I don't need to play the game with my own two hands. I don't need to see it first person. I literally watched the streaming of the game. I. I can see what that is. Uh, no thank you. Which incidentally enough is part of the reason that I'm very fussy about when I do watch streaming, and it's a rare occasion, I might add. Um, when I do watch it, it it's very specific creators. And it's very specific stuff. Because I 
just don't have the energy for it. So, yeah, um, there will never be any Bioshock on the channel. As I don't really do, like, I know Bioshock only, I guess, technically a horror game, I don't do horror games. Not because I'm scared, uh, though I will it, openly admit I am a bit of a weenie, um, Less about being a weenie and more about, like, it's just not my cup of tea. I can do horror just fine, it's just, you know, why? You know, um, I think I mentioned in the previous video that I'm not doing the Dishonored games. Uh, Mostly because they're, like, really open world, and I, A, have a terrible sense of direction, and B, uh, would immediately faff off into another direction, and spend 60 hours going and doing that thing instead of the plot. See, also, my playthroughs of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I do intend to keep it fairly light on the channel, like I've said in the past. I said that and immediately said, ooh, yeah, but also I would love to play the Devil May Cry games. I'm not entirely certain those are what you would even remotely consider light. Let's be honest here. Uh, I don't think I'll, I'll ever do anything like super rough content wise. Not because, you know, like moral quibbles, I, I was quite literally. I, like, I quite literally played DMC when it first came out, and I was a teen. I was a in my early teens when it did, so. Like, I think I was 14 when the PlayStation 2 came out, so. Like, the likelihood of me, you know, being a, being, um, Finding that sort of thing rough isn't... I've been playing games like that forever. I, like, helped my mother play uh, Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil. Not that she'd play the new stuff. Um, so... Well, that sort of content doesn't bother me, I just generally never have the urge to play it. There we go. Okay, I do believe that means the entirety of this building is done. Yeah, I do believe that means that we can officially get started on the tower. Uh, so let's do some of the outside. Uh, switch back to the 15, and we will do a little bit of the outside before we call it good. I'm not going to try and get, like, a huge amount done. 
So that would be silly, and I, I really only got a few more minutes of, of playtime before I hit that, like, 50-odd minute mark. I, um... Like I mentioned before, I, I do want to keep pretty consistent as far as time goes. And I, I try not to set, like, a timer to do these. Because it's, there's nothing quite like setting a timer and realizing that that didn't quite work out. We'll do the rest of the frame. We'll try and do the rest of the frame. Um, No sense in putting the tower up. So clean the door frame. Actually, that is where we're going to call it for today. So I have been Dork Enough. This has been Power Watch Simulator. And when we come back, we are going to continue on the drill tower. Uh, and if you like this video or any of the videos in the series or any of my videos, ever, consider leaving this a like, the channel a subscribe, uh, which helps metrics, and um, hitting the notification bell so you know when I upload, even if it is really regular. I also have a coffee. You can find me at coffee.com slash dorknut. That is K-O dash, that is K-O dot dash F-I dot com slash dorknut. Um, and feel free to leave me a tip if you're so inclined, but please do not feel obligated. Um, but yeah, come see me again sometime, won't you? Goodbye.